everyone, it's Erin here. Welcome to my July bullet journal setup. I hope that June has been very kind to you. There's definitely lots of places around the world starting to open back up, so it's a big relief to be doing things again. Here's some of what I'm gonna be using for my July setup. I have these frame stickers. If you live in Australia, you might be able to find these at Riot Art and Craft. They came on full sheets, but I cut them up so they'd fit in a thing. Um, I've also got this gold foil. This is so exciting. I've never used it before today, but this is a, a gold foil, kind of a similar gold to the gold frames here. You need some adhesive to use it, so you'll see a little bit more about that coming up later. I got that at Lincraft. This is also from Lincraft. Uh, this is a transparent paper with a little bit of a silver pattern on it. It's got little hearts with little lines in between them. Kind of just looks like splodges on screen, not so much hearts, but I promise you they are little hearts and they are very, very cute. And what's exciting about this paper is the transparency. I've been wanting to use a transparent paper in my bullet journal for quite a while because I've seen some really beautiful wedding invitations done with like a, a vellum leaf in front of something pretty. And I love how it kind of just lets the design peek through um, without being sort of overwhelming. And I've been looking forward to playing with that a little bit in my bullet journal. I've got a little ruler here, which is not going to be for drawing lines. It's going to be for tearing edges in this particular setup. I've got my handy dandy glue tape, which is one of my favorite things in the world, not even exaggerating. And that's gonna come in handy with this gold foil later on, you'll see. I've got my correction tape because there's always going to be something that I screw up, can guarantee it. And then my little collection of pencil and eraser, which I've already kind of gone through and drawn out where everything's gonna go in my setup. So I'm not really gonna be using the pencil too much, definitely the eraser. My go-to Sharpie pen, which is amazing because it dries so quickly, you don't smudge if you erase pretty much straight away. And a Faber-Castell Pit Artist brush pen as well for some heading lettering. I think I only end up using it once, but we'll see. And a pair of scissors because you gotta cut your paper with something, right? To start off with, I have a little bit of ghosting coming through my left page, which is gonna be sort of my cover page. Definitely keeping things minimal. Last month was more minimal than this. So if you like to keep things really, really minimal in your bullet journal, I suggest you check out my June setup. I'll pop a link to him up in the cards for you. This setup is still going to be very minimal, but not quite to the same level where last month it was literally just pen and paper. I am a sucker for gluing things into my book, so gonna get definitely a lot more of that happening this time around. So I'm just using a little sheet of my transparent paper here. I've marked it out to be kind of just inside one space worth of dots all the way around the page and it's not going to completely hide my ghosting here but it is going to help me cover some of it kind of distract from it I guess give you a different texture to focus on and I'm just going to run a little bit of glue tape along the top and bottom and down the sides to stick that on into the book going with a really muted color scheme again because it is still winter here in Australia it's actually slightly colder than it was when I made my June video. So that's a nice thing because I love the cold, but the winter solstice has passed now, which means that <laughs> the 40 degree summer is on its way back, which is not my favorite thing, but we'll cope, won't we? We always do. I've decided to go with a black frame for the cover page here. I wanted one with a bit of space in the middle so I could quite comfortably write my July heading with my black Faber-Castell pit brush pen. It's quite thick. Um, so I definitely wanted to make sure there was a bit of space I didn't do the best job sticking this frame down. You know when you are trying to put on a screen protector on your phone or whatever and you get bubbles and you just you can't quite do it right? That was the vibe I had here. Um, it's ended up with a little bump in it that I, I just can't get out and the lines aren't quite straight and I don't really get how that happens with a decal. But here we are, that's what's gone down. And so I'm just gonna go in with my Faber-Castell pit brush pen and add my July heading here, and at least said June then. Oh my gosh, what month is it? And I wasn't too sure how this ink was sticking to this vellum -y paper. So I just grabbed the backing of that sticker and pressed it over the top just to make sure that any bleed was coming off on that and not on the opposite page. But it did actually adhere pretty well, so that's good to know. It didn't necessarily have to be like a permanent pen or anything like that. And this is where things are gonna get fun. Okay, this is my first time using this stuff in any 
situation at all, let alone in my bullet journal. But this is where we're gonna get this foil in. So the idea is you lay down whatever your adhesive is. In my case, it's my glue tape, because that's basically all I've got. You pop the foil on top, right side up, and smooth it down over the top, and then take the foil away, and it will leave this beautiful gold layer stuck to only where your sticky bits on the page were. So I'm just going to be using that as an accent all the way through this setup. Basically, black, white, a little bit of muted silver in that other paper, and these gold accents. And I'm really liking it. I think it looks quite classy. If you peel up the foil and there's any sticky bits still left, so you can go back over and just tap a bit more foil down. If you've ever used nail foils, it's basically the exact same concept. While ever there is a tacky, sticky surface and the foil will stick to it. And that is very, very fun to play with. This next page is going to be my month at a glance, monthly overview calendar page for July. I've used this setup in the past. It's not especially groundbreaking. I actually have a template for this that I keep in the back of my bullet journal where I've pulled out one of those perforated loose churn pages and I use it to just stick behind the page and trace over it to get exactly the lines that I need. I like to freehand my lines, I just find that's faster, I don't like messing around with rulers. My hands are pretty steady so I feel like I can get away with it. I've used this layout a bunch of times but essentially the boxes are three and a half spaces wide and one, two, three, four, five spaces tall. Just need to check back to see what day July begins on so that I don't put the wrong thing in here. Okay, July starts on a Wednesday and ends on a Friday. So I'm just going to add the numbers in. I would usually probably write the days of the week first just so I don't accidentally screw this up, but I did manage to do it correctly, which is a big old win for me. One thing I've been really getting into while I've had less to do the past couple of months is reading. So I've added a reading list in between a couple of my monthly setups. So if you guys have any recommendations for me, please let me know. I've been really getting into Lindsay Kelk and Vari McFarlane's books. So definitely that kind of girly romance, uh, comedy, romantic comedy vibe, I guess. But I will read just about anything. So do let me know what you're loving at the moment. I'd love to hear. I'm gonna pop a little strip of this transparent paper in and that's going to be where the days of the week go. So I've cut it just to be really thin. Luckily it ended up kind of balanced with the pattern, which is nice. It sort of looks like a cross with a heart in the middle, which is pretty cute. And I'm just gonna pop some glue down on the back of that. If you do what I do and put your strip of paper that you're glue taping on top of your bullet journal, accidentally glue outside the lines and um, end up with some glue in your book and you don't want your pages to stick together, just grab an eraser, erase over the top of it. Um, you'll have to go pretty hard, but it will actually just like peel up the glue, which is very nice. Um, definitely recommend that. <laughs> Learning from my mistakes after that and moving the paper off my bullet journal to add the glue on that I'm just gonna add each of the days of the week. I like to start my weeks on a Monday and keep my weekend days together, so that's why I do that. All that's left now is to add a little bit more gold, so a strip of glue tape along the top, and there will be one along the bottom as well. Definitely foil each strip of glue tape straight after you lay it down. Don't add more than one strip of the glue tape if it's gonna be kind of far away from where the first one is, because if part of the sheet that's already had its foil removed touches the glue, it's gonna kind of pick up that glue tape and take it with it and then it won't be sticky enough to stick the foil on when you go back in unless you add another layer of glue. So do keep that in mind. Try to work in small sections as far as the foil goes, unless you're doing one big piece. Are you ready for this, guys? I am mixing up how I do my gratitude and habit tracker pages. If you've been watching my bullet journal videos for a while, this is pretty groundbreaking because I basically have been doing the same thing for my gratitude and habit tracker pages for three years. I've changed it up a couple of times. I didn't really like it and I went back to what I was doing. But this time, I actually feel like this system might work really well for me. Both of these layouts I have borrowed from wonderful Instagrammers and I will pop a little picture of their handiwork here because of course I saved them so I could refer back to it. So the idea for the gratitude page is rather than leaving a line for each day of the month to write a thing that I am grateful for, I'm actually just going to do one word for each day, which is succinct and 
could be really cute, I reckon, when it's done, especially if I maybe write the word in a way that suits the word, if that makes sense. So I just have a grid. It would look better if it wasn't July, which has 31 days. A month that has 30 days, like June, would definitely look better, but we'll have to wait and see if this works for me, I guess, and I can try it again, maybe on a more even month, because I just have a wonky extra box sitting here down at the bottom. Basically, I think most books have a different number of dots depending on the manufacturer and even from my last Loish term to this one the dots to the page are very different so if you wanted to do something like this gratitude one word to a day layout just work out approximately what thirds would be and um, make sure that you can fit 10 or 11 of them down the page and there you go there's your layout super easy I decided I wanted a torn edge on this little bit of transparent vellum -y paper, which turned out to be really hard to do because I cut it first and then decided I wanted the torn edge, which is kind of tricky. The edge is a little bit inspired by the fine art prints that I order for my clients. I'm a wedding photographer. Sometimes I order some beautiful like cotton rag fine art prints with a hand torn edge and it's just so lovely. So I was like, let's do something fancy like that for myself. And then it was really hard. So mad props to the print labs who do that. <laughs> I also didn't measure it very well. I kind of wish now that I'd stuck it in with a little bit of overlap because that's the whole point of transparent paper, but I didn't. I made sure that it fit in the space, so that's how it is and we'll go with it. I didn't end up overlapping my transparent paper over anything, I don't think, in this bullet journal layout. This might even be the last time I use it in the whole setup. So definitely stay tuned for future transparent paper adventures in future setups because there's definitely gonna be more. I'm excited to get this stuff in with something colorful behind it, something with a really bold pattern. Let me know what you think would look really good behind this transparent paper. I have one that doesn't have the pattern on too, so, you know, the opportunities are endless. This habit tracker page, I'm so excited about. So, if you have seen my previous videos, you will know I usually track so many habits. And I don't know about you, but during lockdown, I've been kind of lazy so I haven't necessarily been ticking off all of the things that I should so I've decided to pair it back I've given myself wait how many one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ish I've given myself about ten spaces here these are two boxes wide each for my habits sorry tall two boxes tall each for my habits and I'm going to just track well actually I'm not even gonna track this many. I could only come up with eight of them, so I've left two boxes blank to fill in if I think of another habit that I would like to track later. So the name of the habit will go over in this left column, which is smaller, and in the right column I'm gonna add in all of the numbers for all of the days of July every time. Okay, if you don't like writing out numbers, this is probably not the layout for you. And you know what? I didn't really love drawing this part out. Maybe there's a better way to do it. Maybe I'll have a think about it for next month, but for this month, this is how it's going. So I'm just gonna speed this up for you so you don't have to suffer through it. My lovely boy brought me a cup of tea during this part and uh, his timing could not have been better. So thanks, Chris. Ah, oh, massage that hand. I'm not sure if I'm gonna color the box in or kind of cross it out as I go for the days that I do the habit, but um, it's interesting. We'll see how we go. Gonna add my title here just with my Sharpie pen, not with the Faber-Castell because I didn't want it to bleed through the page for such a large title. Get rid of my pencil lines. And then it's time to get foily again. Ha ha ha, I foiled you. See what I did there? Mm -hmm. So I'm actually gonna make a border out of it this time. At the time I'm recording this voiceover, my lovely cat Mitsu is on my lap purring very loudly. Here's a little bit. Here's a little purring snippet for you. I think this habit tracker page turned out to be my favorite page in the whole setup. So definitely recommend the foil frame. Pretty cute, very easy. Do keep in mind that if you're using foil in your setup, uh, I didn't realize until after, but your pages might stick together a little bit. It's not to the point where it rips anything off the opposite page when you open the book, but they are a bit sticky and there's a chance that might annoy me throughout the month as I'm having to flick backwards and forwards between pages. 
I'm wondering if maybe I can put a little bit of setting powder or something on there because that's the girl's fix for everything isn't it a little bit of Laura Mercier translucent <laughs> I might have to see if it does the job because it is going to bother me if all my pages are sticking together so I don't know maybe I can report back on that next month we'll see I'm just going to add in my habits now so I'm really just focusing on the ones that I guess are most important and leaving the ones that either I just haven't been doing um, and aren't important or Things like my skincare ones, I'm basically doing the same thing every day at the moment with skincare so I don't need to track when I'm using different acids and stuff like that. Next up is the expense tracker page and it's real simple just like always but it is a highly used spread and I don't want to sacrifice any of my page to decoration really besides maybe just the heading. I could probably even get away with not putting the heading but I want to so I will. Three columns, the first one is item, the second one is cost, the third one is category, just the same as I always set it up, still trying to keep it to one page of spending. I got into some very good habits during lockdown, so I'm hoping that I can continue them. In the past I have needed a double page spread for my expenses, but I'm really trying to not do that in the future. Depends on the month, I guess. and. How many expenses because my business expenses go in here as well as personal ones and at the end of the month i tally everything up per category and transfer it into my overall spending tracker for the whole year which i set up back at the very beginning of the journal before the january setup it's going to be really cool to be able to look back over the whole year and last year my year fit perfectly into one loish term notebook with very little room to spare so i'm kind of hoping that it will be the same this year because that was really satisfying not gonna lie just a tiny bit of foil for this page to kind of tie everything together make sure that the layout is cohesive and it's time to carry on to my content calendar page usually this is just a social media planning page that i divide into however many weeks are in the month but i was inspired by my girl lucy Livin. if you like beauty content and fashion content and travel content on youtube you should definitely follow her she is a wonderful friend of mine and she's also a social media marketing person <laughs> she's really good at it and i saw a content calendar that she set up recently and i was like you know what i should have one of those i should definitely have one of those so it's going in my bullet journal hers was an excel spreadsheet mine is not that because i am little miss tactile so this is almost the same as the layout that i used for my monthly overview page back on the first spread for this setup Rather than having a whole grid for the month and having some of them empty, I decided this time to only draw out the days that will happen in the month. There it is, there's this month's mistake. I made my lines a bit too long and I've added an extra row in between each box for planning so I can add the number of the day into that box, which is a little bit different to the calendar layout on the first page as well. I saw somebody else do this recently besides Lucy. I saw somebody's content planning calendar. I will pop that up on the screen as well because it very much inspired this one as well as Lucy did. And I really like this layout but I kind of forgot about it when I was setting up that first calendar spread so I didn't do that there. So maybe you'll see this particular incarnation of a calendar reappear in my August setup. We'll have to wait and see. Takes up a little bit more space in a way that I like. Just adding my gold accent here, gonna put content calendar along the top here. Really not killing it with the hand lettering this particular time around, this is basically just my handwriting, <laughs> but that's okay. Gonna add a little bit more gold along the bottom to tie everything in together, and then I've decided to fill in each of the boxes above the space where the content planning will happen. I decided to fill it in with black, so I'm gonna use the Faber-Castell brush pen for that. But first, I wanted to give it a little test out to see how badly it was gonna bleed through the page. I had one of these testing out all of my pens in my old bullet journal, and I never got around to doing it in this one, which is a bit silly, because the year is half over now. But the ghosting wasn't too bad, so I went ahead and used the Faber-Castell pit brush pen to fill in all of these boxes, because it's much faster than doing it with the Sharpie pen, that's for sure. And going over the same space with a Sharpie pen probably would bleed through a little bit so you know I hadn't been planning to do any black backgrounds so I didn't have my little white Signo gel pen handy I don't know if it's Signo or Signo whatever it is it's a white gel pen 
and I'm just gonna use that to fill in the boxes. I didn't introduce him at the beginning of the video because I didn't know yet then that I was gonna be using it. And that's almost everything done. All that remains now is the weekly spread. I'm just gonna show you the first one because I'm gonna set up all of them the same way. And at this point I had almost exhausted my gold foil. So rather than starting a new sheet, I wanted to get as much as I could out of this one. So I'm going to just line the top and the bottom of the page with a nice long solid line of gold. Just working out exactly how far down that gold should be on the bottom, about there, okay. You can absolutely use different bits of that gold from different parts of the leaf. Wow, that's a bad sentence. You can absolutely use like a jigsaw of gold bits. Just uh, like I said before, try not to let anywhere that you've already removed the foil from that sheet touch the glue. This was where I found that out the hard way on the left page there where uh, it didn't stick so well when I went back in with the actual gold leaf over the spot where it had already sat on top of the clear bit of, I guess it's just plastic once the foil's gone. But I kind of like the effect of it anyway and it doesn't feel too sticky, so we're gonna carry on. This is like the double page spread version of the single page weeklies that I've been doing through the last couple of setups. This one was also inspired by a wonderful account I found on Instagram. I have been doing some really good Instagram bullet journal hunting lately. If you wanted to follow me there too, my account is Erin's underscore journal. I have too many Instagram accounts because I have many things because I have a separate one for photography, but that is my bullet journaling account. So you can follow me there, let's be friends. I liked that this setup was even in the little inspiration version I found, but it had a really cute snowflake for each number for each day of the month. And I wasn't too sure what to do with that. I thought about using these little metallic post-its, but it was too big and it was rose gold and the rest of the gold was quite like cool toned. So I wanted to keep to the gold. So I decided let's just use more foil because by this point, honestly, I'm obsessed. I love the foil. I love how it looks. I haven't had to deal with it sticking to itself yet. So, you know, watch the space. So I ended up just writing the number quite far to the side of the section and then putting a little bit of foil over the top of it. This particular week is starting on the 29th because I like to have a whole week from Monday to Sunday in one spread. So even though the Monday, Tuesday of this spread are technically from June, most of the days are from July. So I wanted to make sure that it fell into the July setup and not the June setup. That just makes sense to me. Probably not the case for everyone, but that's how I like to roll. I'm quite impressed at how much of this foil I've managed to use in one setup. This sheet of foil is looking very bare, which is also quite satisfying. I'm not gonna put any foil on the notes section because it doesn't have a number. And I always forget to do this part until right at the end, but it's time to put a tab on July so I can quickly switch to this layout whenever I need to. If I wanna check something from July, it's gonna be really easy to find because of these little tabs. So I like to switch back to the front of the book, work out where exactly to place it and pop the tab down. It is covering a little bit of the calendar. So if I need to write anything there, I'll have to lift it up, but that's so okay. And here we have it. This is the final flip through for July, 2020. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video and got something out of it. Hopefully you're a little bit inspired to set up for July yourself now. As I mentioned before, I am on Instagram. You can find that and all of my other social media info in the description down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this setup. Hope you're doing very, very well. And I hope July is very kind to you, whether it's the middle of winter or summer for you, wherever you are, I hope you're having a wonderful time. Thanks for hanging out with me and I can't wait to see you again in another video very soon. Bye.